Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet a fairly fun crochet stitch called the Crow's Foot uh, Spike Stitch. And uh, you can see here it's named after these little spike cluster stitches that kind of resemble a bird's foot. So this is the stitch we're going to work on today. It uh, doesn't look as pretty on the back as it does on the front. Uh, so this might be better suited to a project where uh, only the front side of the fabric is visible. You can let me know how you would use this stitch in the comments below. Today for the tutorial, I'm going to be using a little bit of the paint box cotton around yarn in uh, two different colors. My color A will be the blush pink and my color B will be this dolphin blue. I'm also using a five millimeter crochet hook. Links to both of these items can be found in the description of this video. Also in the description, you'll find a link to the free written crochet pattern that's on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around. This channel is updated weekly with free crochet stitch tutorials, such as this one and original crochet patterns. Our stitch today is work in rows. So you're going to start with your color A by making a slip knot, and then by working a foundation chain. And your foundation chain will need to be a multiple of six stitches plus two. Today I'm going to work a total of 20 chain stitches. There's 10. and 20. Once you have your foundation chain worked, you're going to begin row one by working a single crochet into the second chain from your hook and then into each stitch all the way across. At the end of your row one, you can chain one and turn your work. At the end of row one, you're chaining one and turning your work. Now for the next three rows, you're going to single crochet into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way across. So you're going to work three more rows. This is for rows two to four of single crochet stitches. At the end of your row four, you're going to switch to your color B. So go ahead, work three rows of single crochet stitches up to your final stitch, and then meet me back here and I will demonstrate how I like to change colors. So I'm here at the end of my row four. I've worked four rows of single crochet stitches and I want to change color to my color B for the next row five. So what I'm going to do is I still have my color A here attached. I'm going to insert my hook into the final stitch of my row four, yarn over and drop a loop. I'm then going to drop that color A, pick up my color B, which is this blue color here, place it on my hook and pull through. I'm now ready to begin row five with my color B attached. For this pattern, it is up to you, but I'm going to be leaving my color A there attached down at the bottom. I'm not going to fasten it off at this time because I'm going to pick it up when I come back across later on. So for row five, I'm going to chain one. I'm now working in that color B and turn my work. We're now going to work our first row involving spike stitches. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin by working a single crochet into each of the first three stitches to begin. So these are just regular single crochet stitches. I am now going to work a spiked cluster stitch. Now the fun thing about these spike cluster stitches is you can really work the spikes wherever you would like. So if you'd like 
uh, your feet to be more jagged. You can move them around, play with it a little bit, um, but uh, you can adjust these spikes as you wish. For my spike stitches, what I have uh, suggested that you do is you insert your hook uh, into the stitch one row below and two stitches back. So this is our row below and then two stitches back is way back here. So you're going to bring your hook back one row below, count two stitches back, insert your hook into like the hole there, yarn over and draw up a loop. You want to bring it kind of diagonally across and bring it to the height of your single crochet stitch. Next, you're going to work another leg of your spike stitch cluster. And this time you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch, working two rows below. So this is our next stitch here, but I'm going to insert my hook down two rows below, just under it. So if I look at this next stitch, count down, there's one, then down here, two rows below, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, and again, bring it to the height of your single crochet stitch. You will want to work one more leg for this spike stitch cluster. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to insert our hook two stitches to the left and one row below. So this is our stitch here, count that we're kind of working over, count two more stitches to the left, one row below, which brings us right over here, insert your hook one row below, yarn over, and draw up a loop. Make sure that all those loops are to the height of your single crochet, yarn over, and then draw through all four loops. That's your first spike stitch cluster made. Next, what you want to do is single crochet in each of the next five stitches. And this can be a little bit tricky because the spike stitch is so wide, it does kind of cover uh, more than the one stitch. So you really want to pull these stitches back to make sure that you're not skipping any stitches there. You have your spike stitch, if you kind of pull it apart right over this stitch. So you want to make sure that you get your hook into what would be uh, the next stitch. You only want to work that spike stitch, it might be easier to see it from the back, over one stitch. So into each of the next five stitches, work one single crochet. There's one, two, three, four, and five. We're now going to repeat. We're going to begin with a spike cluster stitch over the next stitch, and then one single crochet into each of the next five. So again, to work our spike clustered stitch, you're going to insert your hook one row below and two stitches back. So there's one, two, back here, yarn over, draw up a loop to the height of your single crochet, Next one is going to be two rows below the stitch that you're working over. Yarn over, draw up a loop. And then your final one is going to be two stitches forward, one row below, yarn over and draw up a loop. Yarn over and draw through all four of those loops like so and now single crochet into each of the next five stitches. Again, make sure that your cluster is only being worked over one stitch. You don't want to skip any stitches at the end, otherwise uh, your, your uh, cluster stitches will come out uneven and you'll have extra stitches at the end of your row. So there's one, two, three, four, and five spike cluster stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across to your final stitch and then work one final single crochet into that final stitch. And 
And there's actually three there at the end. So we're going to work one, two, and three. That brings you to the end of your first spike cluster row, row five. You can then chain one and turn your work. For the next three rows, you're simply going to single crochet into each stitch all the way across. So this is rows six through to eight. Single crochet in each stitch all the way across, chain one, turn your work. At the end of row eight, you will want to switch back to your color A. So go ahead, work three rows of single crochet stitches, switch back to your color A, and meet me back here. I am here at the end of my row eight. I want to switch back to my color A, so I'm going to insert my hook into that final stitch. Can yarn over and draw up a loop. Conveniently, my yarn A is just down here at the bottom, still attached. So I'm just going to gently pull it up, place it on my hook and pull through. If you are not working an edge or anything on your fabric, you may want uh, to fasten off and weave in those ends, it's really up to you. So once you've uh, joined your color A, you can then chain one and turn your work. We're now going to begin working some spike stitches in our color A and we kind of want to space them out in between the ones that are down below. So for row nine, we're going to single crochet into that first stitch and now single crochet into each of the next five stitches. Next, work one spike cluster, working them in the same kind of pattern that you worked down below. And the spike cluster will be worked over the next stitch. yarn over pull through all those loops make sure you're only working over the one stitch and then single crochet into each of the next five stitches you can repeat that all the way across to your final six stitches and work a single crochet into each of those final six stitches. Once you come to the end of your row nine, chain one and turn your work. And that's it. Although it is a lot to remember, it is nine rows. So if you need to go back and take a look, uh, feel free to go ahead and do so. For the rest of the pattern, you're simply going to repeat rows two to nine for as long as you would like, then fasten off and weave in your ends and enjoy your crow's foot spike stitch. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, don't forget to check out the free written tutorial on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.